Hi, I'm the host of the STO Smokers Lounge. I'm here to tell you about Anchor, the perfect app that you can use right now to start your own podcast network. You can broadcast right now. All you got to do is download the app, whether you have a phone, iPad, or even a laptop or desktop. You can right now download Anchor or go to Anchor FM right now and start recording and have your stuff broadcasted over multiple platforms such as Spotify. So go to Anchor today and start your podcast career like I have. Because trust me, I love me some Anchor. Black Wall Street is now online, baby. That's right. Visit the GW District. Shop the very best in men's and women's apparel and accessories, home decor, office supplies, books, pantry items, and so much more. The GW District is a retail marketplace of black-owned products and media. We're both veteran and black-owned, and we're bringing you the best online shopping experience with products made by small businesses. Come and experience the GW District difference today at Shop gwdistrict.com that's shop gwdistrict.com the gw district a retail marketplace of black owned products and media that's right that's right right. hello hello you crack it up a little bit let's see You saying the who the what the what water? <laughs> yeah, like you sound like you're underwater. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like your audio sound a little funny also. Um Um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop it, then I'm gonna send you another invite. Maybe they might clean it up. Cause, you sound hello? much better. Yeah. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, sound much better. Much okay, better. Good, good, See, good. people, the people, we we gonna work it out somehow, some way. <laughs> Broadcasting is it? Yeah, it's it's kind of like you know doing the scene in porn. You know, we gonna work it out. Exactly. It <laughs> <laughs> so, hello, how you doing today, Miss Lady? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. It's been a pretty chill day today. Yes, uh, I wish I could say that I had a very, very adventurous and interesting and crazy day. So, but um, I'm at my safe space. Um, well, good. That's, that's which is podcasting. <laughs> good. It's podcasting. You know, what, what time I can say porn was because I enjoyed the creativity of it. Not yeah. just to, you know, I mean, the sex, the sex is what it is, but I mean, the creativity <laughs> of it, you know, at, it's kind of like podcasts, especially since I'm retired, I mean. Mm-hmm. But, Some sort of outlet. I, yeah, but see, I have to say something. Though. I got, see, I finally got you on my podcast. <laughs> I retired. I tried my damn to chase you down to work with you. I asked uh, my man Ty Stokes, I think you had worked with him at one time. And uh-huh. I was, man, I want to shoot with Gina. Gina. Uh-huh. Uh, I want to shoot with Gina. No, because um, no, I remember when you when you first came out, um, your first couple of shoots, I was like, damn, she's gorgeous. You know, plus you had a swag about you on camera or whatever. And from watching you, because how many years you've been in it? Because I'm thinking, what, two, three? Um, I started like porn actually 2018. I was doing webcamming before then, but actually like shooting scenes 2018 was when I first started. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're gonna get to the cam and all that. Yeah, most definitely. So <laughs> I, I saw you on um on one of his, you know, on one of his sites that he I saw he shot he shot you and man that that, that trailer was hot. I was like oh. <laughs> I said if I cut a DC man, I want I wanna I wanna shoot up. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, but unfortunately, that's actually where I'm at right now. <laughs> oh, see, see, I never got a chance to make it up there, but trust me, I see people. I'm retired now, so I had to live by curiously <laughs> through the male talent industry. Now, you there know. you go. So look, 
let me get this, do my particulars, and we can get this podcast on the road, okay? Okay. No doubt. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge here on Anchor, the perfect app for anyone who's trying to start their own podcast career. All you got to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get yourself a profile today and start podcasting. I'm your host, Kevin Arvin, Southern Champ, a.k.a. The Porn Rap Star. All you got to do is, with one link, one spot, you can find all my links, allmylinks.com backslash Porn Rap Star. Let me tell you about three wonderful sponsors that we got. The first one being the Facebook of the LS community. I'm talking about, oh, for some of you people don't understand what LS, lifestyle. LSWorld.com. Plus, the hottest magazine on the web today, I'm talking about Eroticism Magazine. So go to eroticismmagazine.com, get yourself a monthly subscription, get it digital, or get it sent to you in paperback. And last but not least, but black owned, I'm talking about excitebunny.com for your consumers, new place where you can consume some of the hottest. Triple S content in the business. And for you content creators, we're talking about 90% profit, no hashtags, so you ain't got to worry about your shit getting taken down. So what you need to do, whether you're a consumer or a content creator, go ahead and get yourself a profile on excitebunny.com. We're a proud member of the GW District Black Podcasting Network. Plus, while you're on that site, you know, get some shopping done as you get the opportunity to buy products from over 500 black-owned retailers, shops, and boutiques. So go to shopgwdistrict.com. Also, check us out on skyhawkafterdarktv.com as well as the BPLLC app, which you can download on your phone or on your browser. So I'm going to show up and let this sexy DC chocolate vixen introduce herself. <laughs> well, thank you very much. My name is OMG Anna, and I am an adult content creator and a cam girl. Yes, because um, now you have done some work. Because um, I always say the body count, which is how many male talents, female talents, what have you, <laughs> you know, in the business. And it's kind of like to me, it's like, I just knew you were gonna do something in this shit when I first saw you. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, no, because I've been in this business fifteen, almost twenty years. Mm-hmm. I know the looks that will get over in this business, and I don't be wrong often. Actually, I don't oh. be wrong at all because it's a certain look, swag. I tell girls this: you have to look good and make it look good at the same time. You do that. Okay. So I, I'm here. I throw my roses to people. Believe me. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate no doubt. It. So, nice. so um, you said you start with webcamming. You know, I so, did. so started with so, webcamming. So, so, so what brought you to webcamming, and how was that for oh, you? So I was tired of dancing, um, and going into the strip club. Oh my and- God! Wait a second. Oh no! Stop. Let's go further <laughs> back now. Let's go begin with dancing. I'm like, hold up. She said dancer? Oh, you're not just going to say dancer. You're just oh, not going to okay. explain it. Are we going to dance around it? No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. So tell me about your days as a dancer, and then we'll get to the cabin. Um, so dancing, I started when I was fresh, pretty freshly 18. Um, I was always one of them people who was like, when I turn 18, I'm going to be a stripper. Um, and then I turned 18, and the dude I was dating with, pissed me off and I was like you know what I'm gonna go be a stripper um so I did that for quite a bit uh, from 18 <laughs> all the way to like 20 I would say um mm-hmm. like 20 20 like about 20 yeah um and then I had a kid and I wasn't really ready to go back to the club and the club environment and I was just kind of you know it's, it's draining it's a very draining environment especially if you don't have the energy for it mm-hmm. um and I saw these ads online um, for adult models online and adult online internet models and I thought it was a scam um, <laughs> Dude. I signed up for it yeah I signed up for it um, it was like a chat room experience so I was like okay this is cool and people were like giving me money and out in my brain I was like okay people are paying me but like who knows who's gonna who's to say I'm gonna actually get this money and then a week later later that check came in the mail and I was just like oh so that so this is serious so I really thought it was a scam for like a month um, <laughs> <laughs> still logging on. 
I don't know, kind of history from there. I dabbled in camming for quite some time off and on while mm -hmm. working, you know, numerous odd jobs and vanilla jobs and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. And then I would say in about 2017, 16, 17, uh, I really kind of treated it like a business, honestly, with the webcamming and just, you know, trying to find a consistent schedule and just kind of build up my own little fan base on my cam site. And uh, I was doing really well with that until people started for videos. <laughs> and I didn't oh. really have any, especially not with anybody else. Um, and then now, now, saying, now I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this. Because uh -huh. you would do, it's, it's safe to say you were doing pretty well with the camera, am I correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Most ladies wouldn't go into video at first. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't go into video or what oh, have yeah. you. Or if they did video, it'd be more of they record their webcaming and make that yeah. content. So mm -hmm. when you started doing video, would you start doing solos or anything like that? At first I was doing solos, which isn't too far off from actual webcamming, just minus the interactiveness. Um, but I actually um, got into porn by chatting with Bones Montana, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Chatting up with Bones and us being friends on social media <laughs> while I was still just camming. Just camming and us you know, kind of flirtatious at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Mr. Nuts reached out to me and was like, hey, like, you know, Bones came to me and said that you, you know, were kind of curious about the video side of things and we have this shoot house going on and like, you know, this is what you have to do and like, you're more than welcome to come through and hang out and you don't have to shoot anything, just kind of come and vibe and see how things are done and I was like, super down for that. Um, so I, I was in Jacksonville at that time, so I drove down to Orlando um, to meet everyone and it's been history since then. <laughs> oh my goodness. So wait a second, I wait a second. I've seen a Porter Rock there and it's been it's been <laughs> so I'm you this now. Okay, so you went ahead and got the test out of the way. Cause you were like, okay, because I might get there, might want to do so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I no, I mean the kind of part, bitch, because see, you would have got there and probably vibe with somebody be like, you know something, I wouldn't mind fucking his ass because you got a nice little dick and shit. And you like eat right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looked like you could do a little something, something. Yeah, I was I was prepared, so I got okay. there ready to kind of you know mm -hmm. see how it so works you, and kind of experience it myself. So when you walked in, of course he probably had to set up and everything. Um, how how did you feel? How did you react? I mean, was you nervous when you about? I mean, okay, put it this way: when you went in, did you know you was going to shoot, or did it just happen that you shot? Um, it definitely kind of just happened. I was, I think it was just like being in the environment and feeling as comfortable as I was with everyone. Mm -hmm. I was in the mind frame of why not? <laughs> I feel why not? I, I said I'm curious said. about it. I'm gonna find out how curious I am for real today. So, so for, for the rock you shot with, I did. That was my first scene ever. Okay, okay. and what was it? Okay, was it he stepped to you? You stepped to him? Was y'all vibing, um, you know? Fred kind of put it together for us, so he was just like, you know, okay. he's a nice dude, um, he's respectful, he, you know, he's a great performer, like, you know, I think, mm -hmm. I think you guys can do a good scene together. And then, like, we yeah. chit-chatted and vibed a little bit beforehand, because I didn't really understand how it worked, like, putting a scene together. So mm -hmm. he definitely, like, br broke it down for me and, like, made me really comfortable and, you know, mm -hmm. you know, turn out to the camera this way when we do this and we do that, you know, just, like, helpful things, just kind of yeah. Make sure the scene came out the way that we wanted, um, and then I kind of got the hang of it after that. <laughs> yeah. So that was the only shoot you did at that time, at at, at that oh, moment. No. Uh no, I did the scene with Porter Rock was my first scene. Then I did a scene with Marley Moore and Don Prince. Um, I shot with Fred and fuck. I shot with one day? everybody at that shoot house. Oh, I went ham. Like once the once the doors were open, they stayed open. <laughs> <laughs> oh god wait a second yeah. oh, okay so 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 we about to unpack this for a minute wait a second oh lord she did not know if she was going to do a shoot <laughs> and basically did what let's say damn near 50. i probably did about nine i did probably about like nine to ten scenes that weekend i was there mm -hmm. and she that was like the beginning of my catalog <laughs> oh my goodness so all right now Here's the kick on this. You just okay. didn't just, okay, this ain't no content creator shit. You was in the room with bona fide porn stars, okay? Now, with that being said, within, plus, 
you cut your teeth hard because you talking about what ten scenes in the weekend professional shoot. So it's kind of like you had to really learn on the because yeah. the reason why I say that walking in, Camin got you somewhat ready. Let's be frank because of what you had to do with Camin, but. Being in front of that camera with a cameraman is a different beast. Oh, it so, turned me into a different beast too, though. I, yeah. I loved it. That's kind of how I got into, you know, mm. also, you know, making videos with partners. So I was like, one of these days, one of these videos are going to get leaked. And who wants to be on the, you know, on the front end of this? I want to get ahead of it. So that's kind of yeah. one of the reasons why I was like, fuck it, why not record things and put it out there? I'm already webcamming. So I was like, one of these, one of these dudes are going to get the heart broken and my, my pussy going to be on the internet and I'm not going to make anything <laughs> of it. And they're not even going to have the fucking nerve to tag me. So, you know, let's just do this for ourselves. <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, because, because like I said, too, the, some of the things you learned was how to work your angles. Yeah. Um, plus, like plus on top well. of that, I, yeah, and plus people don't realize when it comes to being in front of that camera when you're doing shoots, it's different than fucking off camera. It's, 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 yes. it's, especially if you're trying to do it to a high level. We we ain't talking right, about with just your cell phone Yeah. So it's kind of like which scene did you think in that weekend you hit your stride? You was it you you it, it, it was there. I think let's see. Was it that shoot house? Oh my gosh, I've done so many of them, like it's kind of blurring, but I think it was it was that first shoot house I was at. Um I did a scene, I think it was the me, Marley, and Dawn scene um that we shot. I think that's kind of when I was in a moment where I was like, okay, I think I kind of, I kind of got this, especially like working with two different people in one scene and like really having to watch your angles and all of that. And just like the acting and the, like the playing, you know, the laying down the plot line and all that and just trying to make it make sense and actually like collaborating with other talent and being, coming up with a storyline. Like, I think that was my first time where I was like, okay, now I know how this goes. Um, and then actually, actually it's one of my favorite scenes still to this day. Nice. Now, we get this good shit. Now you got all this content. Now you gotta do something with it. You know, period. Um, plus, on top of that, now that you got a taste of this, now you basically walking in as a straight up well, one, you basically was a porn star by the end of the weekend. That's just be honest. <laughs> Official porn star, you got broken in very good. Um so I was in good hands. So after that, how often did you film to film for your content? And what the steps that you took to make sure that you continuously film and keep up with the demand of putting it out there? Because you got 10, people don't realize it takes more than one scene. It takes more than 10. It takes a lot of scenes to see these checks. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I, my mistake at that point I had all those scenes in my brain. I was like, okay, now let's make sure that you're seen on every single platform possible. So I had every platform, every content clip site uh, possible. And my problem was that I was just kind of like throwing everything up there and mm -hmm. um, not mastering one site at a time. So I wasn't really even making payout mm -hmm. um, because I was just playing it fast and loose and didn't really have much of a, um, of a real game plan. I just knew that these are the sites that people are on. I just knew that, you know, I have content to put up there. I figured out how to edit it all myself and whatnot. Um, so I was just kind of like, this is how, how it's done, ready to go. Um, just like throwing spaghetti at a wall, honestly. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, to be honest with you, that's what they do in the game anyway, for the most part. I'm just being honest. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and what works for one person doesn't work for everybody. So sometimes, yeah. sometimes you, just, you just have to. Yeah, because see, the thing of it is, is that even with me when I started, the first site, actually I was trying, well, the first site that fish I put my stuff on was Clips for Sale. And I'm still okay. with them today. You know, period. And what I learned in the business, well, it was different back then, was that um, it's about scheduling. Um updates because see, the thing i think that got lost in this business is making that update important yes you know what i'm saying the 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 like even when i look at you right you mm -hmm. give them this is what's coming you give them the picture visuals you give them the video visuals and then you drop the scene you know what i'm saying yeah it's, it's, yes. you 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 old school with it like me 
You feel me? Well, I had to learn though. Like I definitely mm-hmm. had to learn that through, you know, just people who've been in the game longer than me and just, you know, at higher level levels than I am at this point in time and just kind of, you know, giving me hints and tips and just being really, really like gracious with the with the advice. And I am so grateful for that. I feel yeah, like I've I'm had just... a lot of that. I have had a lot more of that than a lot of girls have. And I will never mm-hmm. ever take that for granted. I can say that most of the people that I've run into and work with in this industry have treated me with most respect and kindness and definitely um, put me in a position to succeed. And, you know, it's genuine and I can tell that they want me to do well. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't feel like anything was like gate kept or anything. I just, I don't know. I just like to listen to how other people get it done and I'll come up with my own game plan, you know, based Mm -hmm. on facts. (laughs) So how do you fit your camming in? Uh, uh, Do you still do the camming? Do you do it heavy or you do it like in sections because like i said mm-hmm. you 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 your brand expanded to you know saying doing content now you want to mm-hmm. now you got two streams of kind of income you feel what i'm saying yeah. the, how much you fit the camming in so the camming especially once i started doing porn did kind of slow down not, not slow down but i stopped putting as much time into the camming mm-hmm. um because i was editing i edited i edit all my own things i edit my own site i <laughs> upload my own site uh you know i i do everything by myself well, so it's kind of like yeah so i you know editing and actually camming at the same time wasn't working out so great my computer didn't like it and then also like my cam fans can tell that i wasn't really like engaged in that yeah. like i was obviously like focused on something else so i definitely had to split time in that way um mm. with the camming and then for the most part i mostly cam on skype now like people actually mm-hmm. find me on skype and i do my sessions that way so that i can get a hundred percent profit instead of having to split my profit with some of these cam sites i've kind of gotten to the point where i can you know i, I can do pretty okay with just logging on to skype well, and just once see. again that's old school way see that's old yeah. school way with this skype see, see. i'm telling see. you though i know you're talking about my- <laughs> if, it broke. If, it ain't, if it ain't if it ain't broke it don't fix it use it yeah. <laughs> uh, don't fix it. You got to use that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. But yeah. shoot, but um, but see, uh, all right. So now you didn't cut your teeth with the top talent in the business. So it's like an old saying: once you fuck with balls, you don't go backwards. How do you pick the male talent that you work with? What they got to bring to the table? Because it's like this: because you did that content house, mm-hmm. just to start off with. Your thought process, I'm pretty sure, wouldn't have been like any girl that just walked into business because now you've seen yourself at a certain level. You've seen yourself yeah. a certain look. You work with a certain type of professionals. So moving forward, I know you was thinking, okay, I need male talent to work with. I ain't well, just established male talent. You know, people who already ha- are on these platforms, people who are using these platforms wisely and I see them active on social media and actually promoting their stuff and actually tagging talent that they worked with. Um, you know, it's just things like I, I got, I got to a point where I was able to, to kind of see these green flags uh, mm. that sparked my interest in certain people. Um, now there, there were times that I've given, you know, other content creators who aren't that big a chance uh, mm. because you never know. And also I got to the point where I felt like everybody is fucking the same people. So for me, reaching out and dealing with some of these um, these content creators who aren't exactly at the porn star level or not close to it yet, for me, I felt like I was, you know, reaching into a bag that nobody else has. Um, I'm not doing that ever again. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, that was, that look, was a mistake. Look, I, I, I'm going to be quiet on that because <laughs> my sisters know how I feel about content creators i'm doing air quotes i hate we not on video but go ahead yes. yeah air quote unquote um yeah so i definitely learned my lesson the hard way that that time around um mm-hmm. just because you know i didn't mind using my own following and my own skill set to boost other people like there's enough for all of us to eat honestly there's no there's no mm-hmm. reason for me to kind of gatekeep that uh fans like who they like and you know that's mm-hmm. that um yeah. so yeah, yeah, I because that, but, because it's it's <laughs> it, because like for example, like you don't know France reaction depending upon the town that you use. Yes, and it's kind of like hey, I'm like this because me, I always wanted to work with and try to work with girls that 
wanted to learn the game because me, I was bringing them into business. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know, period. But iron sharp as iron. I always wanted to work with the top notches. Now, I got the opportunity to work with some of them. You feel mm-hmm. me? But it's kind of like, you know, it's, I'm sorry, it spoils you when you work with somebody that done this versus you're breaking them in. Yeah. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's, it's like they know what it is, even to the point that do we need to discuss on uh, um, on set etiquette with dudes and females? Yes. yes. Do, do we yes. want to go there on the show? Because see, I keep it real on the smokers lounge. Mm-hmm. So I told you it's uncensored. I, I I don't give a fuck about your feelings. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so 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 we go there. A lot of times, guys think females are single. Just because they don't say, and it ain't just the fans. Sometimes it's the actual male talents. Yeah. So, and I always said this, and I would tell male talents and female talents. The ones you not got to worry about is the talents, is the producers and the directors, because yeah, they'll fuck your shit up. They won't call you back, and trust me, they talk. Oh well, yeah. You know, period. So it's kind of like speak to the importance of ladies and fellas being professional on set and that will get you further than being a thought or being thirsty even before you get on set like just when you're trying when you're interested and like the way you comment on people's things and the way that you slide in their dms like people don't realize how easily they talk themselves out of pussy all day every day she said it best Y'all they heard it from a woman. Out of it. If they would have shut the fuck up, I'm, I'm sh- there's plenty of people who probably would have had a chance to work with me. It wasn't until they opened their mouths and I was just kind of like, never mind. <laughs> I'm a pass. And it's usually a general mm. cockiness or just, you yeah. know, coming at me as if like this is some sort of lifestyle thing. Like this mm. is a business for me. I, I'm, I'm running a business. And if you aren't coming at me as if you're trying to, you know, book a job, or you're bringing something to the table or have something to offer me, then step off. Yeah, because see, the thing about it with dudes, we are, women are the machine, we're the engineers. And the reason why I say this is this. Because it's our dick is the key to that scene to be in the fire. Mm, But girls to make that dick look good, even if it sucks. They're wonderful performers. There you go. Because see, for example, it's a waltz when we on camera. Let's say me and you were shooting, right? It's a waltz on camera. Because I always talk about this. The best position is the most uncomfortable. Of course. It's to look good. It's not to feel good. You got to make it look like it feels good. Because trust me, sometimes with them girls doing them squat thrusts on the dick, they be sore in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm sorry. We need to smoke a We got to hit the blunt sometimes. That's right. There you go. There you go. But see, it just come down to it's. It's kind of like I tell fellas, you had. It's a craft. It's not just you fucking. It's a craft because we in front of the camera. We're thinking the whole time we fucking. So you can right. easily distract it. Women ain't got nothing to worry about but so much because y'all's are just once a month and depending on the company, they'll slide you a bag for you to handle that and get ready for the right. shoot. Oh, but yeah. we dudes, different story. You got to stay hard. No, I got to stay hard. You got to come on cue. Two, depending upon the level you at, you can't come too fast. I'll leave you at that thought. Uh-huh. <laughs> I had a conversation about the white list. Yeah. So I don't need to say no more. I don't need to say no more. <laughs> but but no, but um but no, because it's like to me, that's the most important part of this business that I think why there was gatekeepers, why, like for example, old school, you went and found a producer. Right. You you, you got one of the best in Mr. Nuts, you know, period. Um, I seen that you work with my man Het Tech. Shouts out to Het Tech, friend of that's my baby. Friend, yeah, you know what I'm saying? The uh, podcast, you know what I'm saying, and and all that good stuff. I'm sitting here going down your yeah, you you get down, boo. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like it it's like put this way, you learn you learn the craft. 
you know, period. You learned the craft. So, oh, and you met Cherokee Diaz. Okay. I so, did. She was she's really, really nice. Knowledge upon you, which I'll talk about. <laughs> Basically, we talked about social media, honestly, and just how it's changing and the way to market your social media as an adult content creator is kind of changing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have to kind of get down with some of these more vanilla sites and and still um, be able to pique people's interest in us Mm -hmm. um, and make them want to see more. Um, So we just kind of went over that. And especially she's been Mm -hmm. really like um, doing it big on TikTok. We actually did a TikTok together. It hit 3 million views. I think it's probably more than that now um, on her TikTok page. So that was kind of like an example to me. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm about to figure out these stupid little fucking dances and because yeah. I mean shit. Like <laughs> I mean I mean like my man Artemis, he be on there, uh pays the haze. I'm on Instagram and I ain't on yeah. TikTok. I it just but, it, I get just it, too, but no, but you think of it made me feel old. <laughs> oh, that's why I ain't on TikTok. <laughs> it made you feel old. Imagine how it made me feel. I'm for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, but no, but seriously, it it's making people have to move like a celebrity. Exactly. You know, per, and technically, you are a celebrity. I, I'm just saying, you're a celebrity. I don't give a damn what the letter is. You're a celebrity because <laughs> <laughs> you could be spotted at the grocery store. You, 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 you Giannis. <laughs> Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny that hasn't happened to me in a grocery store, even though I have had some some men stare at me in Target while they're with their girlfriends, and I'm just like, please look away before I, your girl wants to fight me. Um, and in my brain, I'm like, oh my god, do they know me? Uh, where they watch a lot of the internet, like he must be on Twitter. Um, <laughs> but I have had like when I'm in the strip club environments, I find a lot of people actually like know who I am which is kind of really shocking to me it still like blows my mind like I went to at one point in time I was like you know bored and oh I'm gonna go dance again like you know the economy is looking decent people are throwing money with these stimulus ch- put it in the club and see what it looks like I will step foot in the club and I was like hey I'm Billy uh-uh I know who you are and it like fucking blew my mind absolutely blew my fucking mind they're like oh shit you're Gianna not one day, I do not think that one day someone would know who the fuck I am without me introducing myself. That's I mean, so you put it in the work. I mean, honestly, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, boo, you've been putting it work. So, look, fans know what it is. We had that segment, ladies and gentlemen. You know what that segment is. This is the segment where the pussies go dry, the dicks go limp. They talk about the business. Yes, people. This is where we get it real here. All right. The, the, the unsexy shit. You feel me? The real right. shit. Because a lot of fans, people come into business. I want, I always ask these questions. The questions about the struggle within the business. Oh, yeah. Of balancing time with significant others and family and all that to chase the business to the work put in for the marketing, the work put in to find the talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so much is good, so much is not. You know, it's like people have misconceptions and they think that we just making boot coups of money. Not everybody is. You feel it's what I'm easy. I don't think anybody can do it, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I hate that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but they do, they think anybody can do this. They think girls are just taking pictures of their feet and posting them on the internet. And then, like, getting, like, designer bags, and they don't really think about the marketing that goes into it, and how many hours we spend on social media, and, like, you know, how long we spend updating keywords on our site for SEO optimization, and they don't think about, you know, finding talent who's tested and reputable and has a good reputation behind them, and the traveling, and how much money we invest in our own outfits and our hair and our nails just to go travel and spend our own money on that. Like, they think it's just getting flown out every weekend, fucking, and then, then... you know, get in a bag. Like that's that's not what it is at all. A lot of people work a nine to five to put into their porn. Yes, yes. They work yes. a nine to five to invest into their own brand. Which uh, there has been quite a few times. I would say for the longest I went without working a nine to five was five years, and I was just all doing ho shit, um, and you know, slutting on the internet. And I am so grateful <laughs> that that is an option for me. That's why I call. I go back to slut. 
Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, have medical, I have various medical degrees, like, you know, certifications yeah. and qualifications. So, you know, I, I do have the option to do so, which actually I'm, I'm doing right now. Which I'm is so funny. This is what I, I'm going to say. Yeah. No, she says she has a degree in medical shit, right? And I said this on my show. Guess where the most porn stars work at? Hospital, yeah. doctor's offices. Yep. Some of them might be right getting your exam when you go, <laughs> fellas. Yep. For your ladies, they might be giving you a pap smear. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I was just. And the funny thing is, my last vanilla job was at a gynecologist's office, and that's exactly what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> But see, I mean, but that's just a misconception that they have, what have you. I mean, because, of course, social media, we can go to OnlyFans. I can, we can talk about all that. Got to talk about that on other episodes. You know, right. kind of made it seem like it got easy. You know, period. I mean. It's, yeah, it's not. It's hard fucking work. There's a lot of time where I just want to disappear off of Twitter. I want to delete all the social media apps and just, like, be. Um, but I know how significant that is for my business and for my brand. Um, no, like they, 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 dealing with mental health, you know, dealing with my own mental health struggles and whatnot, um, and trying to, you know, be able to take care of myself, but also not to completely neglect my brand, um, mm-hmm. has been like my newest and um, most recent focus at this point in time. Because now I got my mental health, you know, pretty much uh, not completely under control, but it's a lot better than it has been in the past. And I know a lot of times when I was overwhelmed, I would disappear off of social media and I would stop posting on my website and things like that. And I realized that like every time it seemed like I was getting momentum. And then every time something, you know, in my vanilla life would come crashing down, my business life would come crashing down and it'd just be a, a really deep spiral. So I think that, you know, being able to care for yourself and also be able to run your business is something that I had to learn the balance of. Um, cause it wasn't even like relationships. Like, that's not really something that I find to be an important factor, um, for me because I have, I have, I have cool friends, so I have companions. Um, <laughs> I've never, I'm never really actually looking for a boyfriend. Um, like I'm, I'm, dating, I mean, but I, I'm, I'm dating people now, but you know, that's not something that I have to juggle in my porn life. Yeah. Either you with it or you get lost. No, that's actually the best way to be because, I mean, I'm just saying, if, if he loves you, he accepts you as is. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. He accepts you as is, God dang. No, I saw you on yes. the phone. Yeah, keep hitting that phone. Exactly. Actually, right. I'll come in there. I'll tell the boys to come see you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Slap on that ass. I don't give a fuck. Slap on that ass. Yeah, like she like that. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and it's not sure, sure, people with sure, that energy. So, you know. Yeah, shit, fuck you. Yes, it's so difficult to find people with that energy because um, people seem to be very possessive. Um, yeah. And I'm a very open and loving person. And I don't see myself just being with one person for the rest of my life. Like, that's kind of not on my mind, you know. Um, but making this money and, you know, really building something and, who knows what it can turn into like it might just be me you know shooting porn with myself right now but who knows if i'm gonna venture into production if i'm gonna you know teach some cam courses and stuff and teach these girls how to you know be successful with the live streams and i, I mean i have lots of options and it's just kind of like i'm trying to do everything well do whatever i do i would like to do it well yeah because the thing of it is is that it's you you have a extensive brand and I always mm-hmm. talk about brand on these shows or what have you. You know, period, because I think you mentioned um it so I can get this clear, you do meet and greets, you meet the fans. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One Very on selectively, one. but I do. Yes, okay. because a lot of them screen Of course them, selectively. So they screen themselves very selectively. Like I probably <laughs> Yeah, shit. I probably only meet like maybe one or two fans a month. Like that's mm-hmm. probably it. Like I don't give a fuck. I mean, like, no, not it, I, just, yeah. But see, not this. The reason why I brought that to the table is that I always have a theory, and this theory never lied. Females okay. that do it all make the most money because they have more avenues to make it. Most definitely, yes. You have more products to to present to your clientele. They have different ways to feel close to you and have the that connection that they that you kind of tease them with. Honestly, they're watching you be intimate. Like they wish they could be intimate with you too. Um, and my job is to make sure that I can find options and ways that they can feel close to me in that way. And, you know, I feel like my, my brand, especially camming, 
was it started off as like you know girl next door type vibes like you wish you i was your girlfriend type vibes and then it kind of goes deeper than that where they're kind of um especially like a lot of my subs it's kind of like they know they can't have me so they like the idea of worshiping me um <laughs> so you know you kind of just kind of fix fit your brand you know like I, I molded it around what i realized gets my my fan base going like what really what makes them want to put the money where their wallets are like you know put their mouth where their you know money is just making them feel close to me was kind of the, the way yeah because see the thing of it is is that i mean they just be frank it, it when they see beyonce they want to see a scene they like to give yeah. up you know they would get signed autograph it yeah. just so happened her fans as well they want all they want of that. A, they want the whole experience. More. They want the whole experience. Yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Can, can you do that? What you need? <laughs> in that <Yeah>. scene? <laughs> Is that allowed? Yeah. <laughs> so you know how you were in the scene with such and such? Is this allowed? Yeah. <laughs> but no, but see, it's, when people don't realize that's part of the course, it's, yeah. it's no different than being at Exotica. Because you can't go, you can't tell me nothing that ain't no dude just going to ask you. Can we meet up at, you know, new private parties, you know? <laughs> you, got girls. Know that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, that's why I tell females, it's like, oh, you do within the framework of what you're willing to do uh-huh. and you're down to do. Because a lot, of, a lot of times, and I heard this before, I always hear this conversation. Well, the only reason why I don't do boy girl because I so many dicks I got fucked this embarrassing. No, baby, it's you got to fuck the right dicks. And the thing about this industry is you get to choose. So I don't understand. Like that's the <laughs> you get to choose. You don't have to do shit you don't want to do. You can you know fuck with fuck some avenues of your you know receiving income and you know not fuck with others. Like you have so many options. So yeah. to say what you have to do in order to be successful in the industry, I think that's fucking false as fuck. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do because nobody wants to see you half ass doing anything. Nobody wants to see you hating what you're doing because people can tell. People can tell if you're not into it. And that's just a waste of your time and energy. You can't unsuck that dick. You did it. And you did a bad job. Like, everybody saw it. <laughs> oh, no. For sure. Shit, the world saw it. Trust me, I had, yeah. I, I had one of the dumbest questions asked to me. Is 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 anybody in Durham going to see this? I was, <laughs> this was back in the day I said. That but WWW stand for World Wide Web. <laughs> right. To answer your question. I'm just gonna let I'm just gonna let that marinate in your brain for a minute. <laughs> Time to work. Let's do these things so I can get home. <laughs> for real though. I know. For real. I've I mean, I heard some dumb questions. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the wild and free fire and so all my friends come to me with their relationship problems and their sex questions and and then, you know, most recently, it's, well, you know, I was thinking about if I would sell some beat pictures, like, so what do I do? Or I was thinking about, I want a webcam, but, like, I don't want to show my face because I have a career. And I want to do this, but my husband would kill me. And I'm just kind of like, oh, my gosh. Like Everybody wanted to do it, but it's, it's always that. Everybody wanted to do it until they got to do it. Yeah. I mean, from, I kind of do a lot of interviews. And it always still from the pandemic. <laughs> You know, saying that when the pandemic hit, that's when this shit really floated. You know, period. Yeah, I agree. And, and and it just got it got it it just got wide open. I was like, damn. It went mainstream. Yeah, that's all it took. You know, period. And to me, it helped the business and hurt the business in many ways. I it, mm-hmm. no matter what, what side of the fence you fall on it. And um, to me, I think. No matter what, as much as people say they want that OnlyFans shit, the reality shit, it always come back to the porn stars. Because we shoot at a certain level and people are going to respect that and they'll buy it. Yes. And pay good money for it. For production, <laughs> yes, for production value, yeah. which is yes. at one point in time, I, I, that's where I was at. I was like, you know what, I got to step up my, my production you know, value because all these people are just doing cell phone shit. Like, I need to... Mm-hmm figure out how to not make my stuff look like that you know so i can definitely say it definitely made people who are serious about it step their game up 
because of yeah. the industry becoming flooded and so many people doing it. Like, you really have to find a way to stand out. Why, why should someone look at your shit? But now, we about to get some fun shit real quick because, I right. Now, I would have this conversation. I say, it seems like porn start to get more females are getting more open when it comes to it being on camera, especially in the porn business. Like, uh-huh. To the point that, you know, I say more extreme. From we start to see black on black BDSM. We start to yes! see, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shots out to Giselle, Giselle Lane, and, and they can trump the. I always got a shot at House of Gold. I love the people. And, um, and, um, also more, I said 2022 has became the year of anal because a lot of girls been saying they want to do anal more. So, is Things become extreme now. I don't do I don't do anal on camera. Okay, then, okay then. Now, what is it? You say on camera? <laughs> yeah, you caught that, huh? See, I okay. Anyway, lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> he said no. You cannot do that on camera. That is my whole. Yes, that's no. exactly how it goes. That's so my all own. the other slut shit, just that one hole, just that's mine. Whatever the fuck else you want. <laughs> These niggas can piss on you, fucking come all over you. I don't give a fuck. Just leave my booty hole alone. Hey, when the dude said, that ass is mine, no, he was literally saying that. Yeah, yeah, he was very serious. Smoke that over. Now, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, within your brand, because things are getting extreme, plus... Mm-hmm. Um, you have done paid gigs with major companies, or it's just been you've been with pretty much major talent. Yeah, I've done a co- mostly with major talent, uh, for the most part. I've done a couple of paid shoots, uh, but no, no, like huge, you know, production houses or anything. But I definitely appreciate the the opportunities I have had with the smaller um, production companies I have shot with for sure. It's definitely an experience, and it's nice. Okay, 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 okay. So, shoot, so, um, well, damn, I mean, technically, this is why I say it, but what's the point of shooting with the major company? You shoot with the dicks that they pay it, so. <laughs> right, exactly. So that's why I'm like, mm. people ask me that. Don't you want to, have you ever thought about shooting mainstream? Have you ever thought about, have you ever been booked for a mainstream? I'm already shooting yeah. mainstream. What you say? And, and that's kind of what, yeah, and that's kind of think that's where I'm at, where it's kind of like, I don't really understand the point of me jumping through all the mainstream hoops, because, you know, I'm a natural um, black woman with a natural body. I'm not all done up, like, I'm not going to go under the knife just so I can, you know, in, in the name of being, you know, palatable for mainstream companies. I really don't give a fuck about them, because their their dicks are still inside of me, so I don't really care. Like, I Never stopped me but from, see, from, see, from no, doing no. what I wanted. <laughs> but, but, it, it's, but it's kind of like, that's why I tell females, God bless a child that has her own, in your case. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Because, like, you talked to Cherokee. I had a conversation with Cherokee in Miami. She said, mm-hmm. I would tell I told her what I did for females. She said, I wish I met a dude like you. She was like, I wish I was like Pinky. Pinky had her content from day one. She said, at that mm-hmm. moment, had 165 videos that was out. She said, they still making money to the day. I ain't got down from now on. And yep. that was and right when she dropped both of them sites. Mm-hmm. And I learned that from, from Team VP and Mr. Nut. Content is king. And I definitely yes. am glad that I kind of started there because I, I still have stuff that I shot from 2018 that I ain't dropped yet. Now, I'm going to tell you some real shit. Back in 2000 and 10, 11 out there in Hollywood, they were saying that. They told me that. They were like, don't see no girls out here. No. They, for what? $300. No. Tell them to put out their own shit. You're trying to. Exactly. You know? And lo and behold, that would end up happening. You yeah. know, period. It's, it's kind of like uh, only fans, it was like, it was there before anyway mm-hmm. <laughs> For people to make money with their own shit, it's just like I said, OnlyFans made it more, like I said, convenient. It just yes. put it out there even more. But um, I felt for the people that only had just OnlyFans, though. 
Yeah, I was I had OnlyFans back in 2018, and I once they started having the issues with people's payout disappearing and pages disappearing and like that for me was not okay because that was my that's why i lived off of my content like content yes. scamming paid my bills so that was not okay with me so i pulled all my shit off of only fans threw everything on my own website and i've been ro rocking with just my website for quite a few years now and I am at the point where I'm about to branch back out and kind of put some things on mini vids and, you know, put some things on um, amateurporn.com and like some of these video on demand sites. I'm going to, you know, definitely explore those, but I, I'm, I'm glad that I own all of my content. I can probably I, I, count I, I, on, I can probably count on one hand scenes that I do not own. I, I'm just going, to, no, I actually, see, this is funny. She just said something that I've been saying on my show. Never let the industry have more scenes of you that you don't have of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. Trust me, every porn star got two or three scenes on the top of their dome that they wish that was mine. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just putting that out there. Y'all be damned if I go hard as hell on a scene. It's shot well. I love how it looks, and it's not mine. Like I don't, I don't have that. Like someone's about to go make money off of that forever, and like I, I only got this little, you know, five hundred dollars. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like you gonna make more than that over a lifetime? Like that's not okay. It just makes so, sense. So, um, let's see. So, are you into BDSM? Um, I really, really am. Yes, I am in the lifestyle. Um, so I have an actual dom. I'm owned. Um, so I'm in the oh, lifestyle hey, hey, personally, hey, hey, and then I love shooting. <laughs> oh, 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 excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell your dom I, I apologize. I meant no disrespect. Because oh, right. as a dom speaking to a, a, a submissive that is collared, I'm supposed to recognize that and say hello to her yes. dom, whoever he is. Yes. Hey, how you doing, sir? Thank you for allowing me to interview this beautiful woman of yours. <laughs> Bow to you, my brother, to, dom to dom. You know what I'm saying? Now we can continue. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he loves he loves letting me out. So another like like the the, the enjoyment of doing porn is pleasing him as well. Like. I don't know. It's something about the the male being a male being so secure and knowing a woman is his, and me being able to do whatever the fuck I want, and him knowing that I'm all his, and he's just everyone's just enjoying what's his. It's like having he explained it as having the fastest car in the neighborhood, letting all your homeboys drive it, and being like, ah ha ha, and that's why you don't have this car, and then put it in your garage. Yeah, because it's <clears throat> as a dom knowing, yeah, y'all can play with it. <laughs> that yes. comes, it leaves with me. <laughs> right, and then the booty, and then the booty hole is untouched. You may stick your tongue in there, and no dicks allowed in my butt. But yeah, like my 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 actual dom sub dynamic doesn't really affect my my porn life, um, in any negative way at all. Um, I think a dating my kink life kind of does sometimes become difficult. Um, but I definitely want to do more BDSM porn. I think that's kind of in my um definitely in my future to kind of focus on that because I want more black on black BDSM. I have a hard time looking for it. Like that's what gets me off when I'm looking for porn. And, and I have a, you know, I don't have the easiest time finding a wide variety of that. Um, yeah, because so, it's kind of like one of having one a, a, a black dom with a black sub, um, even on the, because of course I you into female, so. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Have you worked with Giselle? I have not, no. actually. No. Okay, I'm manifesting this right now. I would oh, like to see a <laughs> black sub scene with you and Giselle. I think that would be fucking fire as shit. I'm just saying. That shit would be fire as shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's just seeing, seeing you, just imagining you and her. Uh-huh. And acting the way y'all are built and what have you. Mm -hmm. And she's, she got the strap on and she's actually a female dom. And... Yeah. I would love that. And I wish I had more of that. Um, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Love it. That's the type of time I'm on. 
I manifest things, people. I, tell you, I live by curiously through these people. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> because, I mean, to me, uh, <clears throat> I, I love that image, you know, um, because, of course, we know that what's the image that dominates it for the most part. I don't need to even go into that. And, yeah. you know, seeing more of it, because they actually perform at the Exoticas. So that's right. so that, yeah. So it's kind of like and seeing the different images, it, whether it's you know audio with uh, Duchess Cashmere, she's a podcaster, what have you, and um, to uh, my man Amari Rebel, who is now he's a podcaster who also is a born star. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and I think I follow him on Twitter. Swing, you know, what I'm saying it's the swinger lifestyle. It's like we we starting to dibble dabble into it as a race anyway. Even, mm-hmm. even though it's been there, it's just coming out more. That's all. <laughs> I think more people are open about it. I don't even think that it's coming out. I think it's the fact that, you know, seeing other Black people do it is, is giving others freedom to explore it themselves and be open about exploring it and open about the things that they want to try and experiment with. Uh, because a lot of times, you know, we see some stuff and people be like, that's some white people shit. Um, <laughs> or you know just the connotation of being tied up and beaten like a lot of people have their own um idea of their own racial trauma that makes that not okay for them um i kind of have this talk with a lot of people because i am a submissive and i enjoy you know being talked and i enjoy you know the pain and you know being told what to do i, I like it no will i'll ever let a white man dominate me absolutely not you will never see that ever if you do then i've been kidnapped and come rescue me um but i think being able to create our own narrative and do things on our own terms is really important without having to be subjected to this is for these people and this is for you like i don't like that don't ever put me in a fucking box because i will shred that shit see hold up something else i said to be a sex symbol, you have to be I am every woman. And that's how you don't hit that box. Because it's like you play into every man's fantasy in every type of way of his fantasy. And my <clears> own. <throat> which you yeah. can see me enjoying it. They want you to see you enjoying it. Oh, they yes. want it to be authentic. Yes, because like I said, looking at your timeline, uh, even to your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, no seriously it's kind of like no it's like I said the art of looking sexy at the same time making it look sexy you know okay, okay. because it's kind of like this at the end of the day it's not a, it's the man's pleasure is in is in I'm one of those big words because right now I'm high I mean it's, I'll help you out <laughs> it's about the fan it's about their nut it's Absolutely. just the nasty that you do to get him off. It just so happens that he has to get off because he's on camera. Right. You know, period. Yeah, like I see with Jake Playhard. I mean, yo, your hit list, damn. <laughs> 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 Every time I go down, it's like a goddamn cannon. Bomb. Bomb. Yeah. Uh... So, Oh, I love all my porn, my porn friends and family. Like, I feel like I have really good like relationships with the people I work with for the most part, um, and that's really that's really fun for me, and it makes my professional life, you know, more more enjoyable for sure. It's still work, but it definitely it's nice to be able to reach out to people and you know have have this you know really strong network of other you know talented people. Yeah, because uh, now. How often do you shoot? How you you know when you schedule your shoots? How often do you shoot? Um, I try to shoot a couple times a month on, on especially like weekends. Uh, I prefer um to go places where there's lots of talent at one time and place that are all tested. So like conventions are good for that. Um, shoot houses are usually how I get my content in. Um, and then. Uh, I would say I kind of have started venturing, which is kind of reaching out to other content creators independently. Um, but that's not the majority of how I um, do things. Mostly content um, shoot house events and whatnot. Like the Girls Gone Wireless was a great event. That was fun. Got a lot of, um, yeah, got a lot of shoots in. 
a lot of talent I never, you know, thought I'd be in the room with. So that was a really fun opportunity to kind of, you know, link up with people that I never would have been in the room with otherwise. Um, so I really like the. I like, yeah, like I, mean, that. I think Kylie she and BBW, she was in the building and TT Park. Both of them was. Yeah, I love that. That's how I'm It's like. <sighs> <laughs> I interviewed yeah. a lot of people, darling. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But see, okay, then I know that. Okay, we we see you can go because I think would you work out? You work out, or you just that just just straight natural. It's natural. You know? I eat I eat pretty healthy, honestly. I have a little bit of a sweet tooth, but I pretty much eat like pretty clean. I don't eat a lot of fast food, or I don't eat any fried food. Um, like I'm a veggie lover, so mostly it's diet. I don't work out. I could, I'm sure I'd be a force to reckon with then, but that day's I mean, not here yet, so that, so nobody's gonna worry. You shoot, you shoot <laughs> a lot of scenes so that you can maximize your time. You feel what I'm coming from? Absolutely, yeah, I sure do. I really do. I like to maximize my time. I like the power shoot. I like to shoot a shit ton one weekend and then not have to worry. You know, just be able to sit down and edit and sift through it all. Um, you know, for a couple of weeks and then shoot a bunch of scenes again. And, you know, um, and I, a lot of times I'll, find, I'll get a hankering to travel somewhere and be like, okay, well, who else in that area? If I want to go down to uh, Tampa or if I want to go to Atlanta, like, all right, so if I'm coming out this way, who all would be interested? So that's kind of how I do things if it's not going to be an actual shoot house. But I definitely would say I try and shoot a minimum once a month. Um, but usually, lately it's been about twice a month. I've been getting some shoots in. Now, you mentioned the conventions, you mentioned the shoe houses. Now, I understand, yeah, you, you can go all day. I feel you. I, like Captain America, <laughs> it's all day. I let's can't. Let's be real. Let's keep it real. So, I keep it real on the show. I have fem- the females answer this. You still have a coach. You're dealing yeah. with different dicks, different sizes, different shapes, the whole nine. Oh, yeah. How do you pace yourself to where you're not worn out? And you know what I mean. Where like you basically, know, like sore and all that. For the scene or what have you. You feel what I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's real. Like, this is work. So, you know, little tears and things like that happen, especially when you're dealing with fucking monster dicks and whatnot. I haven't had many, um, I haven't been in many situations where that was the case. Mm. Um, for me, I don't really pacing myself? What does that even mean? No. Um. <laughs> if I, okay, if I, for example, yeah, girls might say I can do four scenes a day. I can do more than that because I have more than one, I have more than one hole. Like, shit. Like, I can so, do some blowjob okay, stuff. I can I, do girl on girl. So definitely by mixing up the type of content I shoot throughout a day can definitely mm-hmm. help me last throughout, you know, through last the weekend or, you know, a whole week at a shoot house. But definitely, so, yeah, um, Mixing it up, the type of content that you're shooting. Not all content has to be boy girl. Not all content has to be penetration. Um, oh yeah, true that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got yeah. you. We here, like, we here, we here. I feel you. Yeah. Basic sessions, little foot foot job sessions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I can suck dick forever. So usually I just like, can we just do a blowjob scene while my pussy gets a rest? And nah, nobody no, ever like complains yeah. about that. So. Yeah, see, but to go there. You can actually do a shit where both of y'all got to shower each other up. Hey, stop playing. That just be the video. Right. <laughs> and and that's, I have a couple of those where it's after a shoot and me and somebody else hop in the shower because we have to both shower at the same time and there's only one bathroom and like put on the me and Savannah Star have done that multiple times where we have just like both had to take a shower, cut on the camera and put the cell phone up on the side of the, the you know, of the sink and watch us take a shower type shit. Like content is content. All of it can be used. Somebody wanna see something at all times. There's always somebody. It's better to have it and you know, be able to able to use it at your own leisure than to wish you would have got a shot of, of something that could have been good. Yeah. I mean at the end of the day that's that what you there for. I mean <laughs> And that's how I feel about it, too. That's exactly how I feel about it. I feel like when I walk into a shoot house or any kind of shoot environment, that's what I'm there for. I'm here to fucking suck some dick. I'm here to fuck. Like, where's the camera at? I'm going to go do my makeup, and I walk around ready to go. So you done game bangs? What? Do I do game bangs? Have you done game bangs? Do game bangs?
I did one gangbang. Actually, uh, I guess technically two. Um, the first one I did, it was uh, three guys and one girl with a strap on. So that was my first one. And then the following one I did, I wanted a true, like, all, you know, all black, all guy gangbang. And that was me with six guys. And that was a fucking great time. I still get off to that video to this day. Um, <laughs> but that that's, I definitely do gangbangs. I would love to do more. Um, it's just really hard to kind of get a bunch of men together um, who are into that. Because of egos and because of the wannabe alpha fucking personalities and performance issues and who don't fuck with who and crossing swords and shit I'm just like oh god just fuck me um <laughs> so I definitely don't have as many gangbanger like you know group scenes as I would like it's no nah, trust me I see they, when they when people see gangbangs they think it was easy for long oh my god I literally walked in that house counted how many black dicks were in there and I was like so I'm getting a gangbang this weekend I just want to let all of you know so save up your nut. I, I walked in the house and saw the opportunity. I was like, nah, this is going to happen this weekend. It's happening. I'm going to get this shit. Oh, no. Wait a second. It was two holes open. Let's make that clear. <laughs> uh, it was only two holes used because the third one is owned. But yeah, uh, I still, you know, everybody nutted and had a good time. So. Sure, I'm obviously. No. <laughs> I, I've seen the videos. I seen them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, straight up, I'll be fine for a minute though. Yeah. I, I know the, I know the I know the good ones. I know the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, now nah, it's good to see your growth web because like I said, it's just like um, from your pictures, how you market. Um, then I tell people, understand you have to treat it as a business. You just can't do it in just filming, or just, right. or just having sex, or or, or busting the nut. No, it's it's more meticulous than that because it's to make money in a overpopulated, saturated business. <laughs> yeah, there's like people moving to LA to be actor. Like that's this is kind of like the internet version of it. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like uh, me and uh, me and Hectic were joking, and we were saying that like OnlyFans is like the new SoundCloud, and yeah. these bitches are trying to get everyone to watch to listen to their mixtape on fucking SoundCloud. Like that's what OnlyFans has turned into. So you got to be able to you know sort out the shit from the actual quality stuff that has potential. Is to me, I, I I I had gotten it and I had made thirty dollars on that motherfucker, and then they hit me up about some bullshit. Yep. <laughs> I said, "No, nah, I delete my account." Exactly. <laughs> Sounds about right. Somebody hit me with a chargeback. That was my first time. I was like, "Oh, so y'all aren't protecting us?" Like I felt really like vulnerable, like financially on that site. I did not like that. So. Yeah, but see, I see you have your own site, so you good. I have. <laughs> I've had that site since 2000 and what, 16, I think? I think I've had OM Gianna since 2016. But I'm going to summarize it like this. It's like this. You, I think each piece from you being a stripper, cam girl, to now being a full-fledged porn star, because people don't realize when they want to screen the term content creator, porn star encompasses her being model, stripper, cam girl. <laughs> I guess so, huh? <laughs> it's just every T part of the sex worker. True, you gotta be a slutty triple threat. See, that's the point. But yet, <laughs> like someone saying nigga. I leave y'all with that thought. Mama, tell everybody what they spend money on you. <laughs> well you guys are more than welcome to go to omgiana.com I sell my feeds individually there I also have uh, my subscriptions going on there you can get everything, no pay per view you can message me for free leave me tips and love and also find my wish list there 
Um, but also I got all the other major um, cash applications. Um, the cash app. And my name's OM Gianna everywhere. Or Oh My Gianna is all of my social media. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Oh My Gianna. So, Miss Lady, like I said before, you know you got to come back to the, to the smoke house, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. This shit doing this interview, I'm like, nah, she got it. We got to talk about the BDSM shit. And we even going on the mental side of it. Yeah. Power exchange. I, I'm just, I'm just saying. You feel me? I'm totally down. I would love that. You know, and oh yeah, I, I trust me. I, I bring it back on a regular basis. Cause now she's gonna be on the smokers lounge. She's gonna be in the premium smoke room. But first, before I even tell y'all about that, can I call you a smoke buddy? Yes, let's be smoke buds. See, there you go. So that means she will hear her again on the lounge as well as in the premium smoke room. That's right. That is my subscription base podcast network. I'm talking about six premium podcasts that you get weekly for $4.99 a month. That is extra from the free shit that you're getting on the lounge itself. You know what I'm saying? Billy Pilgrim, me Pilgrim on wrestling, you know what I'm saying? As well as just the Smokers Lounge, Bonus Smoke Fridays, and Savage Saturdays. Savage Smoke Saturdays. I don't need to say no more. And every now and then a special smoke. But anyway, with that being said, Miss Lady, I really enjoyed you, y'all. I had a great time. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So, people, you know how we end this all day, every damn day. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience? You didn't learn anything. Smoke this over. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>